notice my temperature gauge is actually in the red here. I need to pull over. It's an indication that there's something is going on with my cooling system. And also got that light. So I need to pull over and check to see what's going on. Okay guys, so I noticed there is something going on with my fluid. I just poured some water into the radiator and you can see where the temperature went back down to normal. So I think I have a leak somewhere. So I need to take it home and check it out to see where that leak is coming from. So actually here I just pulled over here on the highway. I need to uh, get this vehicle here home. And so here I go get trying to get off this highway here. It's kind of very dangerous. Okay guys, so this is normally what happened. This speaker here is like 9, 10 years old. Maybe some radiator hoses needed to be changed. So I need to go ahead and pressure test it and check to see what's going on where this leak is coming from. I could hear this the pressure is escaping somewhere out of the water system. So need to go ahead and put the pressure test on it and check it out see if I can figure out where this leak is coming from okay guys so here I brought the vehicle home uh, let me recap what was going on now yesterday I was coming in from a four-hour trip where my vehicle developed an overheat uh, the thermometer went over to the high and the thermometer lights came on I pulled over and discovered that I had no fluid inside my radiator right here there's a leak somewhere there and I poured some water in it and brought the temperature back down to normal. And I drove the vehicle home. And so now I'm getting ready to do a pressure test on the system to just figure out where this leak is coming from. Now here's a radiator pressure tester here. It's to pressurize the cooling system. Purchased this from Snap-on. And I'm going to uh, pressurize the system to see if I can discover where this leak is coming from. So here I go, remove the radiator cap and connect the pressure tester to the radiator here. Now I'm going to pressurize the system here. If the system has no leak, this gauge should just stationary wherever it stops. But if it falls, that means there's a leak in the system. So. Let me pressurize the system here. And I can, you can see, you can see the pressure here is dropping. So where the pressure here is dropping, therefore there's pressure is escaping within the systems. So I'm gonna show you where this leak is coming from, which is coming from this valve right here. This valve right here, I'm going to pressurize the system and you can see where the water is shooting out. 
right there from this valve right here. Now this valve here is connected to the heater coil cooling system to give you heat inside the vehicle. And this is a three-way connectors here. So this connector right here is cracked. And you can see where it's shooting out right there. As I pressurize the system, you can see where it's shooting out right there. So that's where my leak is coming from and that's what caused that overheat while I was on the highway yesterday. And so I have to go ahead and go to AutoZone or O'Reilly's to see if I can locate that part. Okay guys, so now I found where the leak is coming from. It's coming from one of the uh, houses, upper and lower. It's coming from the upper houses. There's a crack in the plumbing. So it's time for me now to uh, remove it and um, go ahead and replace it. Now I have ordered the, uh, the parts. This is one of the, this is the, uh, the part which is leaking right in this crack area here. You can see this is where it cracked on the original part on the vehicle. When I take it off, I'll actually show you, but this is the new part here and the crack in this area right here. And um, the kit came with two uh, plumbing, the lower and the upper. So um, it only makes sense to go ahead and replace them both while I'm at it. So let me put through these guys. So let me put these guys aside and go ahead and remove the, the original parts. Now the tools I need is just a pair of pliers and a screwdriver. Now I need the pliers to compress the clamps and the screwdriver to pry the lock on the lower end. Now the lower end of the shoulder hose has a lock on there. This lock right here it just slides it on and then it just automatically locks. And, and these are the two clamps to apply pressure on the ends while installed. So let me go ahead and remove the original ones. Uh, the other end is up here. It's hard to see. And then down here, this end right here, it's already, uh, I've already pre-removed it just for easier access, but it's the same concept as installing the new one. Okay, so this is where the leak is coming from right there. After pressure test, the system fluid started shooting out from this crack right here. Right there. See, it came apart just right there. So that's where the leak was coming from and causes the vehicle to uh, overheat while I was on the highway. Okay. So this is junk. Now while I'm at it, here is the, the upper hose. This is the, uh, the larger hose here. I've already started taking it apart for easy removal. So you can see I have already expanded the clamp and remove it from off the plumbing right here. And I've done it in all, at all three places here. So it makes sense to go ahead and replace both of them. Now this is the new one, same design. This one here didn't come with a new clamp. I can go ahead and just use the original one. And this is the replacement plumbing or hose assembly for the smaller part that was cracked. So all I have to do is just put some rubber lubricant around each area here 
and go ahead and reinstall and install the new one. Now it's an easy installation here. All I have to do is to slide the two rubber ends back to uh, the plumbing. And then uh, this end here has a clip, just slides it on there. And once it slides on, it locks in and keeps it up there. So this is the female part and the male part is is this end right here that's the male part so this end this end right here just slides up in there slides on the male part there just like that this goes up to the heater core the lower section of the heater core, just like that. Just slides up there. This ends here, just slides on there, just like that. Locks in like that. And then this other end connects to this plumbing right here. And the only thing is left is to expand the clamps. Just like that. And locks it right there. So this end is locks in there with a clip. And this other end up here, same concept, just expand the clamp and just moves it up into position just like that. Let's get now it's time to install the new upper hose assembly and this is the old assembly here. This came in the kit consists of the smaller and larger hose assembly. So now okay install the smaller hose there here is the final installation the clamp is in position to the heater core At this other end here is in position the clamp is secured and down here is locked in that clip down there it's all secured now i can go ahead and install the upper hose here. First I go ahead and connect it to this end. That's good there. And the next and it's up here. Okay. And now I can expand the tank.
Okay, guys, so this was the broken hose assembly that I replaced. And I also did a little preventive maintenance while I actually had it. I went ahead and replaced the other hose, which is this one here. So now it's time for me to now it's time for me to assess my work to make sure that everything is connected properly. So this is the large hose right here. Connect right here. Then the next point is down there, which is that clamp. And then the next part is to the heater core up there, which is up in here. Now the smaller hose now, this is the smaller hose right here, connects to this point here, and then to the lower section of the outlet on the heater core, which is that point right there, and then, which is this point right here, that's the return, and then here is the, the next point, which has that little clip that snaps on to the male section right here. So those are all the points that I'm, we'll be checking for leaks once I pressurize the systems to make sure there's no additional leaks elsewhere. So those points are good. Now it's time for me now to service my radiator. But before I service my radiator with the right fluid, which is the Preston antifreeze, I'm just going to use regular water in the system just for now. And then once I fill the system and pressurize it, I'm going to check for leaks. And if there's no leaks found, then I can go ahead and drain the system and then service it with the right fluid. So first I'm going to pour water in the radiator and fill the system. Once the system is filled, then I can go ahead and put the pressure test on it and pressurize the system and check for leaks. And if there's no leaks found, then I will go ahead and drain the system and then pour the right fluid in there. I don't want to pour the antifreeze inside it and found out there's a leak, then I may have to drain the system. And this antifreeze costs a lot of money. I don't want to waste money there, guys. So I'm doing it the clever way here. Okay, now the system is filled. I can go ahead and pressurize it. Now I'm going to be looking at these points where I pointed out earlier for leaks and beyond. So I'm looking for approximately, recommend like 39, What I'm actually looking for is the pressure to maintain on the gauge. Okay, I'm gonna look down here, make sure that there's no leaks at these points, that point all these points where the clamps are down here and at the heater cores up there make sure there's no leaks coming from any of these areas okay you see the gauge is stationary it's not moving 
That's exactly what I want to see right there. Therefore, there's no leak in the system. So I know the system is maintaining its pressure. So now I can go ahead and drain the water and then resurface the system with antifreeze, antifreeze plus coolant. So now I can go ahead and release the pressure on the system here. Now I know the system has no leaks. Now I can go ahead and drain the water. Now in order to drain this water here, there is a drain plug down here on the radiator. I may have to remove the expansion tank to have easier access of it right here. Just remove the expansion tank just for now. And here is the drain plug down here. And since I'm outside, I can drain it on the ground. Here's the drain plug right here. I'm just going to open this drain plug right here. I let the water just pour in the concrete. And once the water is drained, now I can go ahead and close the drain plug and reinstall the expansion tank and service the system with the right fluid and the right amount of liquid. And then after the system is serviced, now I can take the vehicle on the highway and go up to approximately 70 for like 30 minutes to about an hour and then come back and check to see see if the system is is good make sure that the um, temperature gauge stays within normal after the engine reached a normal operational temperature and then we know that everything is good and then i'm good to go okay guys so just stay tuned okay guys so now the system is all drained now it's time for me to service it with antifreeze Okay, so before I do that, I'm going to start the engine up, then bring it up to normal operational temperature, then I can properly service the system. So here I go. Okay guys, now the system is filled up and now uh, you can see the gauge is at a normal temperature right there. So you can tell the system is, is good and we don't have any lights. All these are regular lights, brake lights, seat belt and door, etc. So the system is now functioning normally. So now it's time for me now to take it on the highway. And uh, I'm going to take it on the highway for like about 30 minutes up to 70 miles an hour. And then that will tell me if everything is good. Okay, guys, after fixing this leak, I'm now on the road test to make sure that the temperature gauge is, is where it should be at the normal setting. And you can see where the temperature gauge is at the normal. You see where the temperature gauge is at normal there. I've been driving for the past 45 minutes on the highway here. So you can see that leak is fixed. So that's it for this task. Anyway, guys, I just want to say thanks again for supporting this channel. And uh, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks again. See you in the next video.